I'd like you to notice on these crankshafts that we've got a radius right here where the journal comes into the crank throw area. Okay, that radius is called a fillet. And not all crankshafts are going to be set up with a fillet like that, but a lot of times if you've got two rods riding on a common journal, that fillet's going to be in place. All right, well, why is that a big deal? That's a big deal because a lot of times you're going to find a connecting rod assembly like this, all right, that has chamfers around the diameter of the rod's big end. You'll notice on this one here, there's not a lot of chamfer on that side, but on this side here, there's quite a bit. That chamfered side definitely needs to go to the fillet on the crank. So this thing is going to install like this. If you were to install it backwards, what's going to happen is, is that the rod and the bearing are going to be uh, wearing against the fillet. And if that occurs, um, you're going to damage this side on the fillet and you're going to damage the crank. Also, you're going to find that that's going to force the rods towards the center like this and they're going to contact each other. You should have some clearance on the rods and if that clearance is being taken up by rod contact to the fillet, you'll have no clearance there. And what that means is that you're going to rapidly wear components, damage an engine in a hurry. Now, it doesn't matter if it's a rod like this or a rod like this. This rod has the same thing. You see right here, not a whole lot of radius. On this side, quite a bit of radius. Again, that's going to install towards the fillet. Once you have the rods on the pin, do make sure that everything is free and that you do have some clearance between the rods. That rod clearance will be specified by a manufacturer, but generally you want to see somewhere between 15 and 25 thousandths of an inch in clearance between the rods. Something else to check.